This is Aslan with IMTS TV, and today we're going to take a journey. We're going to look at the movement, the progression, and how to 3D print a die part. Step one, we're going to start over in North Building, and we're going to meet our friends at Lincoln Electric, Wolf Robotics, where we're actually going to 3D print the new die part. Tom, can you tell us about this new machine and Lincoln's new initiative in the industry? Sure, Aslan. Uh, the system that we have uh, and the technology that we have can print very large uh, pieces of metal. With this, we can achieve much better cost points, larger scale with 3D printing, and do things like this project that we have with Oak Ridge, where we're printing a die in a day. So the example that we have on the die of the d in a day is uh, taking a base plate material, doing the near net build of the die outline, and then that will go to the next stage and get machined down uh, into the actual die piece that we have. Lead time on dies is huge. Typically it can be on the order of six weeks, eight weeks, 16 weeks. If you get a big die, it can take forever to get a die, right? And we're trying to show that we can do this in a much quicker manner, right? By going into printing down that uh, near net shape, you have way less to machine. And with that, the overall process is much quicker. Step two, we're going to South, visiting our friends at Mazak. And from there, we're gonna get this newly 3D printed die part and we're gonna machine it. So Mike, tell me about the process of machining this 3D printed die. Okay, we're going through a die in a day process. So we've already done the additive portion where the Wolf robotic system added the material to the plates. Now we've moved it to our booth where we're going to go ahead and machine the die to a finished machine shape so it can be used in the press. How do you see this advancing the industry and helping the industry? Yeah, responsiveness I think is the biggest issue where, you know, maybe to do the die out of a solid piece of material would take a, quite a long time. With the additive process, we can probably shorten the time to getting a part into a press and getting parts manufactured. Can you explain to us how the machining process works? Yeah, this is a five-axis machining center, a vertical spindle with a tilt trunnion table. So it gives us the capability of doing all the features on the part, uh, blending the radiuses that are, are incorporated in the design of the die. Step three, from there, we're gonna stay in South and visit IACME and show how this newly 3D printed die part can make molds. So John, can you just, in your words, tell me the progression and the benefits of using 3D printed dies in mold making? The value in this is kind of twofold. One is we're demonstrating the capacity to make molds for you know, production uh, you know, in, a, in a very short time frame and at lower cost. Uh, in addition, we're showing, a, I think, a paving a way for demonstrating this at larger scale. Uh, just as uh, Additive has shown uh, great inroads in producing polymer molds at, uh, at scale, we see there being, uh, especially in the composites world, you know, benefit for producing metal molds at uh, scale as well. Step four, we're going east. We're going to the east building where we're going to visit QVI, Quality Vision International, and we're going to make sure that the newly molded parts fit specific standards. So we're going to scan them and make sure everything is up to standard. Right now we're walking around seeing this die in a day process, seeing from one company to another, and it's very intriguing. How do you see uh, 3D printing evolving and how do you see it helping the industry in the near future? Well, 3D printing is, from my point of view, it's already a fact of life. It's there in manufacturing and will continue to evolve. Uh, where we participate is that through the 3D scanning point of view is if you can 3D print something, you can probably measure it best with a 3D scanner because a 3D scanner is really like a 3D printer in reverse, okay? So we capture everything that's in front of you. It doesn't matter what the shape is, and that's where the 3D scanning comes in. So as time goes on, as more and more parts become become 3D printed, I believe 3D scanning will be a much bigger component of the whole inspection arsenal of, of, of what people are using to measure parts. And step five, we're going to finish right here in West and visit Oak Ridge National Lab so we can discuss the importance of additive 3D printing, additive technology in the tool and die sector. So Anjay, can you tell me about how this die in a day, how additive manufacturing plays a role in the tool and die sector today? We are showing that uh, we can do parts in very short period of time and we can do them locally. We can show the, the final demo, we can show the product and we can show the technology is ready now, not 10 years from now. It's something new, uh, something that uh, potentially it will not replace the classic uh, way of doing parts, but it will help them uh, find new markets and create new parts that so far uh, they haven't been possible to do. 
very often it takes maybe six months to get the part, where right now it could be weeks. We believe that uh, many of those parts will be actually quite cheaper to make and they could be made locally. And that's it. Start to finish, you see how easy it was, how quick it was, how efficient it was. Additive manufacturing and building dyes. Again, this is Aslan with IMTS TV. We hope you'd enjoyed it and we'll see you soon.